In today's podcast, we will discuss George Russell going to Williams, the possibility of a Vietnam Grand Prix, and just what has gone wrong for Sebastian Vettel in 2018. So here we are, guys, for today's podcast, and I'm here again, as ever, with Niblo. How are you doing today, mate? I'm doing it very well, as usual, mate. Good to hear. Now let's go on to the big news that has happened today as we are recording this podcast that George Russell is going to Williams for 2019. Now I'm not going to share my entire opinion on it because I am in my new show tomorrow, uh, which is live at 3pm in the UK, by the way. Don't forget to check that out. Um, I will fully give my opinion there, um, but I will say um, I'm very happy to hear this news because... I've always liked George Russell, and I know that he is a very, very good driver. Uh, Nib, what do you think of Russell, and what do you think of this news? Yeah, I'm very happy that George Russell's going to have a seat in Formula 1 next year. He certainly deserves it. He's been brilliant in F2, even better than uh, everyone's Mr. Hype, Lando Norris, that's for sure. And... I think he will do well next year. It it obviously depends who his teammate is. And one of the teammates being considered is Esteban Ocon, along with Sergei Sorokin. So we'll see who partners, partners him next year. But for sure, he definitely deserves his seat. And I really, really hope he does well next season because he is a fantastic bloke and he hopped in to, for some FP1 or 2 um, commentary with Crofty in Japan and he just seems like a good upstanding bloke and the world of F1 um, needs it that's for sure and once again Esteban Ocon is just such a classy bloke probably the probably the most classiest bloke on the good straight away congratulating him even though it probably does mean that he won't have a seat next year and he'll probably be the test and reserve driver for Mercedes but I'm very happy for him, yeah. And when it comes to Russell getting this seat, do you think there's anyone that maybe deserved this seat more? Or do you think Russell, with what he's done in F2 and also in GP3 and his junior formula career, do you think he deserves this Williams seat more than anyone else, say, than Esteban Ocon? No, I don't think he deserves it over Esteban Ocon, but he does deserve it in, in his own right. There's there's no doubting that. He's been brilliant in F2 this season, produced some brilliant drives to get some great victories. So, yeah, I, re- I really, really do think he deserves this seat. He's been my prediction for the seat for quite some time, and same as you now. So, it's good, glad that we got our prediction right, but... Yeah, no, he he 100% deserves his seat. Now, when it comes to 2019 with Russell, I think if the car is maybe not good enough to be in the top 10 consistently, but is closer to the points than it has been this year, I think Russell can do something with that car in terms of maybe getting a surprise points finish. I think he can get that if... The Williams car, again, is closer to the points than it has been in 2018. Neb, do you think Russell will get some points finishes in 2019? Or do you think it kind of depends on how good or bad the Williams car is? Well, hopefully for his sake, Williams do have a better car next year. And also whoever is the other driver. But... Yeah, they'll, they'll probably get points. I think it's going to be a rare, rare occasion where one team doesn't score any points in a season. So, yeah, I I, th- I definitely think he will score some points next season, which will be great to see when he does. And hopefully for George, he does have a successful rookie year in Formula 1. Now, guys, we're going to go on to a rumour about the possibility of a Vietnam Grand Prix in 2020 in Hanoi, I believe. Now, I'll be honest, I don't know too much about this subject. I do want to see F1 go to Vietnam for a Grand Prix because, kind of like Azerbaijan, you never know. It could end up being a great track that we go to and a great venue. You know, Baku... You know, we didn't really fall in love with that track until the second year of going there. So it's a case of if you don't try it out, you never know what could happen. And Nib, I think, has a bit more information on this. So go ahead and 
kind of inform us as to what this Grand Prix could be all about? Yes, so an article from racefans.net come out during the Japanese Grand Prix weekend discussing how the plans for the the 2020 Vietnam Grand Prix are in an advanced design stage, sorry, and Charlie Whiting visited the proposed site last week and said that there's no actual progress on building the track, but the site's been identified. He, he then also said it's in the advanced stages of design, and as far as I'm aware, they're aiming for a 2020 Grand Prix, which shouldn't be a problem based on previous experience. Now, one thing to de- definitely take out of this that Haas will have to run a, a different livery for this race because any sign of the American flag on the Haas team car will uh, not end well. That Let's just put it that way. And this will be interesting. I, I never thought we would see a race in Vietnam, that's for sure. I don't know. What are, you, what are your thoughts on potentially having a race in Vietnam? Um, I don't see why we can't try it out. I mean, yeah, it's... Uh peculiar location i guess for a grand prix but we, you know we've had other tracks or locations where we had races where we didn't expect so i don't see why we can't have a race here again you never know what could happen in terms of if the track's good or not no one thought there'd be a grand prix in azerbaijan say 10 years ago but look we have one and it's a track that i think most of us really like so Let's see what happens. Yeah, I definitely think the the main thing is, is it a good track? And then can they get the fans in to bring the money in so that they can can then continue the race in the future? They're the main things that they have to worry about here. Are there actually Formula One fans who will pay the money to go to this race in Vietnam? That will will be seen. But it looks like we're going to have... Two new races added on to the 2020 calendar with the Miami Grand Prix and now by the looks of the Vietnam Grand Prix. So that will push it up to 23 races in a calendar. And for me, that's too much. I don't know what you think about it, but for me, that certainly is too much. Yeah, 23 races might be a bit too much. Hopefully they space it out so we don't have triple headers because... In 2018, this season, that has been quite a problem in terms of tiredness for mechanics and people just following the sport, especially if the racing is not too good. So, you know, if they space it out, then I think it might work out, but it might be a bit tight as to, you know, how close the season ends, you know, coming to Christmas or how early it starts at the start of, you know, spring. Now we'll go on to our final topic before the questions, which is to do with Sebastian Vettel and kind of how 2018 has just gone wrong for him in terms of trying to win his fifth world championship. Now for me, where it's gone wrong for Vettel is how it's gone wrong for him in 2017. He cracks under massively intense pressure like he had in Singapore in 2017, Baku in 2017 and also this season in France in Italy, in Japan, in Germany, when you put him under massively intense pressure, not only, you know, intense pressure, but very quickly, you know, all at once, he cracks under pressure. He does it time and time again. He's been doing it for his entire career. For example, Canada 2011, you know, leading on the final lap for them bottled it, uh, the bottle the lead to Jensen Button. Vettel has had this problem for a long time and... I think because he has been in such a close battle with Lewis Hamilton this season, it's become more evident because they're closer together in terms of a fight than, say, they were in 2010, 2011, 2012 and 2013 because their cars, in terms of performance, were further apart. And, you know, Ferrari, of course, made their strategy mistakes, but Vettel has again made... I think basic errors for a four-time world champion. Nib, for you, in 2018, where has it gone wrong for Sebastian Vettel? Well, pretty much any time where he has to make a big-time move. I I go back to Baku, where he locked up trying to get the lead off Valtteri Bottas. I think back, obviously, to 
Hockenheim leading his home Grand Prix and then binning it in the wall. That moment will scar him for the rest of his career. If he had won that race, who knows how the championship could have went because it certainly, certainly would have been in Ferrari's favour at that stage. And who knows what could have happened after the final races. But I'm going to suggest that Sebastian Vettel goes sees a sports psychologist. It's something that Roman Grosjean did after his horrific, horrific spell of crashes in 2012. So, yeah, I, I certainly see some potential benefits for Sebastian to go see a sports psychologist to deal with the events that have happened over the past few years. You know, that might sound, sound a bit dramatised, but for a, an elite athlete at this level, they need to be on top of their mental game at all times. And if they're not, they won't be winning races. And that's the way I feel at the moment with Sebastian. Certainly after Singapore, he just seems so downbeat and doesn't seem the usual upbeat, happy, always up for a joke and smiling Sebastian Vettel. So definitely he needs to go see a sports psychologist for me. Uh, now, what do you think he, he needs to do? I think seeing a sports psychologist should definitely be on his list of priorities at the end of 2018. Now, when it comes to sports psychologists, I don't necessarily believe in them because... I think with Vettel, because he is now, what, 31 years old, even if he sees a psychologist and his crashes and his mistakes get less, I just think this is the way Vettel is. I don't think this will change in Sebastian. Just look at Roman Grosjean. Even though he improved after seeing a psychologist, he still makes, you know, silly errors. Just look in 2018 when he crashed uh, at Turn 3 in Spain. Um, on lap one, his crash in Baku, he still makes quite silly mistakes despite uh, seeing a psychologist. So it may improve the situation and he should definitely see one because if it does improve his situation and it does cut down on his mistakes, then that will be a bonus going forward for him. But I just think this is what he is. I just think this is the way he is mentally as a driver. And going forward for Sebastian, if he does get beaten by Charles Leclerc next year, I think confidence-wise, he'll be down in the dumps because Lewis Hamilton has so much momentum compared to Ferrari and Sebastian Vettel that I wouldn't bet against Hamilton winning his sixth title in 2019. And if Vettel gets beaten by Leclerc in 2019... I wouldn't be surprised if Vettel ended up out of Ferrari by the end of 2020. Do you think that's a possibility or do you think Vettel will fight back in 2019? Well, I hope Sebastian Vettel fights back next year because I do want to see a proper, proper title fight between Hamilton and Vettel go right down to the wire. A proper title decider. We haven't had a proper d title decider, in my opinion, since 2012 because 2016 you couldn't overtake it was just very very annoying that race although Rosberg did pull out a nice move on the staff and I'm just recalling now but back on to Vettel if he gets beaten by Leclerc then yeah I, I potentially see him getting cut by Ferrari I don't think it will actually happen I don't think Leclerc will beat him in his first year at Ferrari but who knows stranger things have happened you know, he's certainly been beaten by a rookie teammate coming into a very, very senior team. And uh, of course, I'm talking about Daniel Ricciardo here. <laughs> Shock. Um, but with Vettel, I, I really think he does need to see a sports psychologist. He needs to get everything that's happened the past two years behind him, out of his head before he starts the next season. He needs to... It's something that Nico Rosberg did. He seen a sports psychologist in the year before where he beat Lewis Hamilton. He really got on top of his game. Really, I think a lot of credit has to go to Rosberg for winning that title. He did a fantastic job. He did the job he needed to do. And that's something Sebastian Vettel needs to do. I, I, I firmly do believe he needs to see a sports psychologist and just to try and help him become a better driver. Because one of the criticisms of Vettel 
going back to 2009 and 2010 that he made too many mistakes. And it's kind of reappearing now, nearly 10 years later. So hopefully he can get that out of his game. And obviously, depending on the speed between the Mercedes and Ferrari car next year, challenge Lewis Hamilton for the title. Now, guys, to end this podcast, let's go on to the questions. And the first one is from Lord No Tellen, and he basically has three, which kind of rolls into one. First, was Lewis Hamilton right about the Pirelli tyres still being too hard? In my opinion, yes, Nib. I think you probably think the same. They are a bit too hard. Yeah, definitely. The Pirelli tyres since 2013 have been far too hard. He also asks, should we only have one pit stop races? In my opinion, we should have at least two stops in a F1 race because it just offers excitement. Nib, do you think the same? I I think given your last answer, you probably do. Yeah, definitely. The two to three stop races are certainly the best because there's so so much variation, you know, the driver ahead could go on the harder tyre. The dr- driver behind could go on like the middle tyre, the medium tyre. And then they're going to close together and they're going to have a battle. So, like We used to have a lot of that in 2012, but not so much anymore, which is quite sad. So I do hope to see that. And the really only one-stop race of the season should be Monaco. That should be the only race where, where it's a one-stop because... There's just no point in pitting twice because you just lose track position and you won't be able to re-overtake. And he also asks, and should pitting under the safety car be banned? In my opinion, no, because, you know, all the teams can do it. Yes, if you're in a certain situation where a car you're battling has just pitted before the safety car came out and the safety car comes out and now you can pit, yes, it does give you sometimes an unfair advantage, but... That's just the way it is. If it happens the same way the other way around in terms of who's battling for position, you know, the the other driver who is disadvantaged in that certain race can then take advantage in another race. So I I don't think it should be banned. Um, Yeah, Nib, do you think differently? Yeah, this is usually something that's brought up by some crybabies after one of their drivers gets slightly disadvantaged by the safety car coming out. So, yeah, I think that any notion of pitting under the safety car being banned is is nonsense, quite honestly. You should be able to pit underneath the safety car. It's part of F1. It, it, and if your driver does have bad luck, don't worry. The luck will come back around. That's just the way this sport works. So I think people jump to conclusions too quickly about this sort of stuff. And, yeah, certainly the, you should be able to pit underneath the safety car. The next one is from JB who asks, who will win the next four races? Of course, the last four are USA, Mexico, Brazil and Abu Dhabi. For me, I'm going to go Hamilton for the US Grand Prix. Mexico, I'm going to go Max Verstappen. That might be a bit of a surprise, but I will go Max Verstappen. I think Red Bull will be good. Brazil, I'm going Lewis Hamilton. And in Abu Dhabi, I am going to go for Valtteri Bottas Nib. Um, who are your picks for the final four races? Well, for the next race in America, I'm going for Lewis Hamilton, where I do believe he will clinch his fifth world title. Now, usually Hamilton drops off after he wins a world title. You know, he'll relax back a little bit, but I don't think that will happen this time. So in Mexico, I'm going Hamilton. In Brazil, I'm going Hamilton. And in Abu Dhabi, I think they'll finally pay back Valtteri Bottas for what he did at Russia and he is quite he is quite strong at Abu Dhabi so I believe he can beat Hamilton that weekend and hopefully get a good start going forward for 2019 and the final question is again from Lord No Telling can you clarify the rule changes for 2019 if any the two main ones I guess are first off the front wing they're trying to simplify the front wing aerodynamics and direct better the airflow around the front wing to create better racing and better following and they are also widening the rear wing to make DRS more powerful again to make the racing closer so hopefully when it comes to the biggest changes I have simplified it and also there is uh, changes about the driver weight when it comes to ballast and also 
fuel limits, but they're not massive changes, and I don't think it's going to have a massive effect on the racing in 2019, but those are the biggest changes for 2019, and I hope they do have a positive effect on the racing. But guys, that's it for today's podcast. But before we go, me and Nib just want to thank you for the support on the last podcast, the one reviewing the Japanese Grand Prix. It is the highest viewed one so far that we've done since we started the podcast in mid-August. So thank you very much. And in the comments, we've had a lot of support. And again, me and Nib just want to thank you so much for that. Nib, I'm sure as we keep going along and go into the winter... Hopefully, this podcast will just grow in terms of viewership and hopefully popularity. Yeah, that's certainly the plan. And it's certainly getting a lot easier to record every single week. You know, I think some people don't realize that this is actually quite hard to do. But it, we're getting better at it every, every week. So certainly looking forward to the future. But anyway, guys, that's has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget guys, I'll be back tomorrow at 3pm UK time with a live This Week in F1. As well, don't forget to join my Discord server, link below in the description, also with my Twitter and my website. Comment down below what you thought of this video and comment down below what did you think of the topics we discussed. Please comment down below what you think about those topics and until next time, it's been me, Chazzer HD. goodbye. <laughs>